Section 7C is a new um, problem that we have to deal with in, in this, this interest-free loan space. It applies where we've got a natural person who is a connected person in relation to a trust or a company, and I'll do one with the company specifically to, to show some of the new planning, or let's just say planning nightmares that this has created. Um, a natural person, a connected person in relation to the trust, the natural person will be a connected person in relation to the trust, just simply put, when the beneficiaries are family members of the natural person within this, the third degree of consanguinity. So spouse, children, etc. And 7C applies where the natural person directly or indirectly provides to a trust or a company any loan, advance or credit. Um, it indirectly can also be where you move, you move a company to make the loan, then 7C would also apply. And the trust then incurs and the company or the company interest at a rate of lower than the official rate of interest. The difference is then treated as a donation on the last day of the year of assessment of the trust, subject to 20% tax to the extent that it exceeds the section 56 2 b amount. So, and this is where you've cumulate, cumulatively exceeded the 30 million rand, it will then be subject to 25%. So, what, and we said that donations tax is a state duty in advance. So what SARS was saying here is that by making this interest-free loan, we have, we sell assets to the trust. Yes, we pay the capital gains on that, the resulting capital gain, the tax on the capital gain, but we, we then um, have saved a state duty. We didn't donate, so we've saved donations tax, and we have reduced the value of the property in, 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 in the deceased estate. So we're saving the state duty. We're saving something at 20%. And their answer was to bring in this deemed donation to tax us on that uh, 20%. Right, so that's the first thing. I just want to look at another example. So we've got a person, the planner, sells uh, an asset to a company by way of a loan account. Interest-free, requires a 12-month notice. The trust has an 18% interest in the company. Um, I'll explain who the beneficiary are and the relationship between the shareholder. And another shareholder has a 6% interest in the trust. And, and of course, the balance, that must not be 674%, sorry, um, I've done a minor calculation error there. It must be 76, it looks like, yeah. Um, the, what is important is the 18 and 6%. So there's an other 2% shareholder that we don't know who that is. Irrelevant to the scenario. People often say, but this, this transaction is not caught by Section 7C, or this, this structure. 7C does not apply to it. We've got the natural person, I call him Plan 1, or her, and, and we've got South African resident trust and a beneficiary there. If we take the fur further... Um, scenarios and we just keep it as South African residents. Plan one is a natural person, of course, and the father of beneficiary A. So one of the beneficiaries of the trust is beneficiary A and that's there is a relative and in the first degree of consanguinity. Shareholder two is a person who is a partner of beneficiary A in the same sex union which is intended to be permanent. So shareholder two is not a family member of the planner. Now, in terms of an amendment that was backdated, apologies, that was backdated to the introduction of essentially section seven capital C, um, this structure is now caught by section seven C. The other shareholders are not related to plan one or his spouse within the third degree of consanguinity and none of them related to beneficiary A or shareholder 2 within the second degree of consanguinity. So that was a new rule that was, was, was uh, actually came into the Act. So with regard to the loan in the company, we look at who owns the shares. And the law now states that does the trust hold together with any person who is a beneficiary of that trust? So beneficiary A, no, doesn't hold shares. Or the spouse of a beneficiary. Unfortunately, or not Fortunately, that's the wrong word. Factually, the shareholder too in this permanent heterosexual or same-sex relationship is for tax purposes the spouse of a beneficiary of the trust. 
And therefore, if we read that now, we say, the trust hold together with a person who is the spouse of a beneficiary of that trust, more than 20%. Remember, that is at um, 18 plus 6%, it's 24%. So in this instance, the loan that Plan 1 had made to Company 1 will be caught by Section 7C. So our structure is that we want the company underneath that, but be aware of Section 7C that extends to that. The next problem that we have is the deeming provisions of Section 7. And I'm just going to do one or two examples. Section 7.5 is the most common one. Section 7.3, minor children, I think we all know that. But Section 7.5, we've got the parties to the trust. We've got the trust, the founder, the trust, the beneficiaries. And 7.5 says where any person has made a donation, settlement or other disposition, which is subject to stipulation or condition made by the donor or made by this person or anybody else to the effect that the beneficiaries of the donation, settlement or other disposition shall not receive the income or some portion of the income thereunder until the happening of some event, whether that event is fixed or contingent and there's consensus that a discretionary trust where the income is subject to the trustees exercising their discretion to vest it in the beneficiaries that don't have vested rights in that is what is envisaged in section 7.5. The moment you've got that, the income that is now kept back in the trust um, and not received by the beneficiaries shall so until the happening of the decision or the death of the person, whichever takes place first, be deemed to be the income of that person. So understand that. If we take our scenario, plan B. Plan B had made an interest-free loan, let's just say, to the trust. The South African resident trust and the beneficiary of the trust is his, um, is, is his son, just to keep it simple. The trust owns a, a fixed property that was acquired by the loan that was made by Plan 1, derives rental income. The rental income is used in the trust to pay off the bond. So let's say it was partly funded by a loan from, from the, the planner and partly by a bond from, from a bank. So effectively the income is kept back in the trust. Because there's a, a low interest-free loan, a portion of that income will be deemed to be that of Plan 1. And Plan 1 will be taxed on that, not the trust. If it's paid out to the beneficiary, and if the beneficiary is, a min is not a minor, the beneficiary will be taxed on that. So the flow-through principle will work there. But Section 7 taxes, and I'll do another example of this as well when I get to Section 7-8, um, taxes the person that had made the interest-free loan or donated property to a trust. So one of the disadvantages of donating property to a trust um, is that Section 7 may tax the income that accrues to the trust in the hands of the person that had made the donation. So there are multiple all Section 7s that apply to that. Let's look at another one, which is also new and important in our planning. Government has since 2008 been concerned that controlled foreign company rules do not capture foreign companies held by foreign trusts. So we've got a foreign trust, foreign company. A lot of, they had really scary draconian legislation on the table, 2016, 2017, then they withdrew that and they brought out some new things. And then in the 2018 legislative cycle, they, they introduced the legislation, had a discussion with everybody that complained about it in September last year, and finally, we now have the law that I'm going to explain to you that. And, and the reason why they're doing this is they say there's a loophole, a perceived loophole from sources side in the current legislation regarding the use of trust to defer tax or recharacterize the nature of income. And the following amendments are, are made to the Act. And it is actually Section 7A, Section 25 cap B2A, Paragraph 72 and Paragraph 80. Now, to, to deal with the Section 7.5 one, remember that rental property in the trust partly funded by interest-free loan, we've got the same rules in the capital gain context. So here we see Section 7.8, Paragraph 72 mirrors that, 